This is Prince Hanley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure love. to talk to you today about gather the fragments that remain. Finish the work. Recently I looked out a window to see beautiful great works of architecture and design. I thought who did these great works? Many people were involved, laborers, designers, architects, contractors, financiers. All of them were rewarded monetarily, especially the developers and owners. However, the developers and owners took the greatest risk. It's the same way in the kingdom of God. You will be rewarded for your work. However, in God's kingdom, you will also have eternal rewards. And just like in earthly ventures, the developers, the pioneer workers in God's kingdom take the greatest risk, sometimes their lives, but the rewards are the greatest also. If you'll study church history, and particularly the lives of martyrs like John Huss and Tyndale, John Wycliffe, uh, the Anabaptist, and others that gave their lives, many tortured, many burned, some drowned, some fed to wild animals, so that we could have the Word of God, and so that the kingdom of God, the holy church, the invisible church, unbound by fetters of men and government and church hierarchy, would proceed down through the ages. It's our job to carry this work on. And particularly today, as I want to talk to you about gathering the fragments, it's your job to carry your work that God Almighty has given you on for future generations. For people today that you're ministering to, some you won't even know that you're ministering to, but you'll see in heaven and for future generations. In God's work, you can cash in at any time. You can quit. You can stop sacrificing. You can stop giving. You can stop working, and there are many reasons you might want to cash in. Maybe you've been offended, lied about, lied to, emotionally hurt, physically or mentally injured, or maybe you're just plain tired. Scripture admonishes us ahead of time as follows, Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. 2 Chronicles 15.7 But you, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. 2 Thessalonians 3.13 And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Galatians 6.9 Our Lord Jesus is a superior example. Resisting great temptation, enduring the greatest of pain, public mockery, and extreme mental anguish, he endured all the way to the end, and he finished the work. Why? He did it for you and for me. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3 and 4, For consider him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, unless you are wearied and faint in your minds. You have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. In other words, you and I have not paid that great price that our Lord Jesus did. And why did Jesus do this? What motivated him? The previous verse in context tells us, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You can read that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Jesus saw the end. He saw you and he saw me and the millions that would be saved to spend eternity with him and with his Father in heaven as a result of his finished work on the cross. Can you see the end? Do you see beyond the temptations, the trials, and the tricks of Satan that would try to impede, to slow you down, to hinder you, and to bring to a halt the work that God has assigned for you to finish? Can you see the joy that's set before you? 
This is why Satan is trying to make you weary, to discourage you, to have people lie about you, to get you to quit, to make you sick. But God is not going to let that happen to you. He's sending me to give you this word of exhortation. If you don't quit, you will win. But if you quit, you cannot win. Some of you are bound to medicines that intelligent, well-meaning medical doctors have prescribed for you. If you've read any of my works on healing or health, or listened to any of my podcasts at the Healing and Miracle Podcast, you will know that I'm not against doctors or medicine or hospitals. Thank God for them. God can use them, and many times He does. There are, however, some cases where people are taking medications that are keeping them from proper health. In other words, these people are not experiencing total healing, divine health, because of the side effects of the medication, even medications that were expertly prescribed. Why? God is being put as an option instead of the source of healing. More trust is being put in the human physician or the medication than in the divine physician. King Asa was a prime example of this. He sought the advice of the physicians. And there was nothing wrong with that. But he did not seek the advice of God. In Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 12 and 13, it tells us, And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet, until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to his physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers, and died two years later in the one and fortieth year of his reign. My friend, always go to God for the final opinion and advice. Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse 34, My food is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. After multiplying food for the multitudes in John 6, verse 12, Jesus said, Gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. As a worker for Christ, your food is to do the will of your Father in heaven also. In like manner, Jesus does not want any of God's will, your food, wasted. Jesus wants you to finish the work that God has assigned for you to do. What if all the Christians did not finish their work? In Hebrews chapter 11, we can read about people who have gone before us and endured great affliction to finish the work God gave them to do. Then in the next chapter, in Hebrews chapter 12, God tells us, Wherefore, seeing that we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, the people in Hebrews chapter 11, who are watching us from heaven, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Why is your work not finished? Tired? Discouraged? Betrayed? Disillusioned? Lost your vision? Lied to? Lied about? Quit too soon? Lack of finances? No prayer support? No encouragement? Lack of demonstrated support? Physical or mental weariness? Worldly attractions? Worldliness or sin? Past or present? Poor health? Check this out. Think back to when you had a vibrant, dynamic vision of great works to do for God. What were you doing then that you're not doing now? Living by faith daily? Fasting regularly? Actively witnessing and winning souls? Praying much? Attending worship meetings often? Sacrificing? Reading your Bible regularly? Through the Bible every year? 
praising God among men openly, willing to leave your comfort zone? Stop living your life as though it is finished. It's just starting today. Pray and ask the Lord to reveal to you what secret devices the enemy is using to keep you from finishing the work that God wants you to do. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you discernment into the areas where Satan is attacking you, spiritually, mentally, physically, materially, or relationally. Then do what the Holy Spirit shows you to do. The Bible tells us in the book of Jude, verse 20, But you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues often, my friend. The power of the Lord will take you and put you on the winds of the Spirit and thrust you out into greater harvest than you've ever known. Don't give up. Remember, gather the fragments that remain and finish the work. See the picture set before you, the joy, the people that will come to Christ and be helped and delivered and set free and healed because of the work of God in and through you. This is Apostle Talk, and this is Prince Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure healing Holy Ghost miracle-working love.